to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Wow, what a day. I've spent about 300 miles on the road. It's beginning to rain like crazy. I just got back to the Red Brick House. I left here this morning. Drove that 300 miles, dropped off that vanity, and now I'm back here. And it seems like an atomic bomb has gone off where the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott have mutually agreed about the contract situation. Basically, we're going to wait and see. We're going to wait and see. And um, I do have good news. Good news about if the Cowboys don't re-sign Dak Prescott. It's not all a loss. It's not all a loss because the Cowboys will actually get something by letting Dak Prescott go. Because here's what we've been hearing, you know, there's a no trade clause, so they can't trade Dak, right? And he'll walk and the Cowboys won't get anything for him. Well, I'm going to say that that's a lie that they won't get anything for Dak Prescott because they will be in line for a comp pick. A three. And since they spent a four on originally drafting them, they'll actually come out ahead. Isn't that great news? Oh, but it will cost them next year's dead money, $40 million. Now, I want to clarify something here because um, I was listening to Pat McAfee with Adam Scheffner on there, okay? I want to make sure we understand exactly what we are dealing with right now, okay? Because what we are dealing with, this is Dak Prescott since he signed that contract because everybody's like, you know, Dak is just greedy. Well, it's it's a $40 million deal. It was the way it was structured. Let's be clear here. When they keep telling you that Dak Prescott is 21% of the salary cap this year, this is true. But there's a reason because of that. If you look at year one, it was 8.2%. If you looked at year two, it was 8.9%. you look at year number three, it was 11.7%. And the reason why those were so low was because the Cowboys needed the money to pay for other bad contracts. So they used this thing like a payday loan. And I don't know how many of you guys have done that before, a payday loan or you know where your t- title is your credit. If you don't pay up, they're going to repossess your car. And at some point, you keep kicking that money and all the fees and everything else until eventually you get to the point where you got a whole lot of money that you owe, and that's where the Cowboys are with Dak Prescott. But again, the good news is if he walks, you're going to get a third-round comp pick. Woohoo! We in the money, in the money, okay? All right. So here's the thing, okay? This year... The cap number is $55 million. If the Cowboys really wanted to reduce that, they could reduce that because they've added some voidable years to the contract. Okay? So here's the thing. When you look at this, the Cowboys are going to have to pay $95 million to Dak Prescott over the next two years regardless. No matter what. No matter what, they're going to have to pay that. Okay? Because they kept putting money down the road. So the thing is, is if you were to cut him right now, you take $66 million dead hit. Boom. There you go. You'd save, or excuse me, you'd add on $11.4 million. You could let him play this year, and then next year, you just take a $40 million cap hit. There you go. And you could start Trey Lance. So you get your cap relief by Trey Lance being, you know, signing him for another year, depending on what he wants. 
The question I actually have is, is this because the Cowboys figured they don't want to negotiate on this? Or is this because Dak Prescott basically said, I'm sick of this place. I am tired of being the whipping boy and the fall guy and seeing all of the pieces around me go and higher expectations put on me, higher than what's put on anybody else. Higher than what's put on anybody else. While other teams are getting Derrick Henry's and, you know, shining uh, you know, A.J. Browns, we're losing Emmett Smith, Emmett Smith, geez, Zeke Elliott's and Amari Cooper's and Cedric Wilson's and not replacing them. And so if I'm Dak Prescott, knowing that um, I live my dream of being the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys and seeing Jerry Jones literally say we're going all in and then turn around and say doing more with less and throwing me under the bus, you're either going to pay me what I want or I can go someplace else and win a ring because I don't think it's actually winning a ring. In fact, Des Bryant called Jerry Jones a liar and said when Jerry Jones says, you know, we're about winning the Super Bowl, they're just bullshitting you. They've been bullshitting you for years, all of us, me included. They're just bullshitting us. They're keeping us hooked like any good crack dealer, keeping us high and on the supply. Now, let's listen to uh, Adam Schefter and them. And again, you've seen what it is. Next year would be a $40 million dead hit with the $55 million this year. You just broke this news uh, via your Twitter, but then you attacked us and said, not really, though. Mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys have been an interesting follow during the free agency period. Now going into the draft season with the DAC news, not signing anybody. Yeah. Then Jerry Jones allegedly alludes to they're going to have to win with less going forward, even though they're all in. Where are the Dallas Cowboys at right now? What does Dak Prescott's future look like? What's Mike McCarthy's future look like in the state of the Cowboys from what you're hearing here, boots on the ground? We spoke to Mike yesterday, right, in the next room and said to him the – Eagles have been very active in free agency. Giants have been very active in free agency. Commanders have been very active in free agency. Congratulations on re-signing your long snapper because that's basically what they've done okay. in addition to drafting. Just the Eric way you said it. Eric. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, were, no, we were having fun. Did you say and drafting <laughs> Eric Kendrick? <laughs> he, believes, signing. he believes that they've got guys coming off injured reserve that are going to make a difference. He believes that there are guys going into their second and third years that are poised to pay, take big jumps. That's what they think. But the problem is, is that they've got to make more moves. They got to pay C.D. Lamb. They got to pay Micah Parsons. They haven't done anything with no. Dak at all. And the time to do a deal with Dak was before. One thing about C.D. is you'd actually get some more cap re relief. By the way, for free agency, and they didn't do that. So th there was no cap savings. So if they wanted to go get some of these marquee free agents that were out, th they're gone. They don't want to go and off get the them. street. So. Now they're in a situation with Dak going into the last year of his deal. He's got a $55 million cap number. If he leaves after this year, uh, the dead cap money charge is $95 million that they're going to have to spread out. Jeez! Now, which would no. be a new NFL record. Even $95 though $95 million dead cap, and he leaves. And no trade clause. No. No tag clause. So when now, again, that's where he's wrong. It's $95 million for this year and next year total. It's not 95 next year. So get it right, Scheffner you're going into the last year of contract he now becomes the 2024 25 version of kirk cousins and dak to me is a really good quarterback so if and when he becomes a free agent next year dallas may want him back but there might be a quarterback needy team giants commanders mm, yeah. who knows like we could go through the list right now there'll be no shortage of suitors for Dak Prescott as a true unrestricted free agent on the open market. Like, how many that's an ESPN dream, isn't it? Oh, that's yeah. a dream. Oh, dream. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The shows you know, are living the dream right now. His contract was coming up a few years ago. Oh, yeah. That that may have led Get Up and Sports sure Center did. and NFL Live every day for like months on end. Oh, yeah. And then a deal didn't get done. You see and what it's all about, obviously guys. Obviously, he gets hurt. Yeah. And then now it's all, we're back in it. Yep. And then hey, a deal look, happens. Look, it's a quarterback league. 
It's Dallas Cowboys. If you combine the quarterback with the Cowboys. With free agency. With free, with a guy yeah. like, Hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars. We, we might as well just we call it like DSPN, like Dallas. You well, know, that's sports, what some people do, do call it. They do call it DSPN for a lot of things. Yeah, You talked about the $95 million cap or dead cap. The $85 million dead cap we'd never seen before. Unprecedented. Sean Payton was asked at one of his breakfast things, drinking a coffee. Hey, have you? did you worry about the 85 $5 million dollar dead cap? No. And they just moved on. And the internet's like, wow, Sean Payton hated Russell Wilson. That, that <laughs> oh, yeah. was the immediate response from that answer. That was unprecedented. But do you think because the salary cap's going up, we'll see how the Denver Broncos do? Is this a potential, like, going forward, we're going to see these types of things happen more often with the way deals are being structured? I, 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 don't, I don't. That's a lot of money. So much. Okay, I got to stop there with those guys, uh, uh, with, with Adam Schefter, because here's where, actually, I'm going to have a moment of pause, because if Adam Schefter is the one that broke this, this is also the same guy that said that the uh, Green Bay Packers were going to move on the day of the draft from Aaron Rodgers, and they signed up to a $50 million contract. But, of course, this keeps them Definitely talking. Definitely talking. Um, this one is also interesting. Is Rich Eisen, who had his five interesting things that were going on in the offseason, and he's going through and talking about them, and one of those was about Dak Prescott. Polls last hour, he's not going to go there yet. But uh, the Bears' only intention is to draft Caleb Williams and trade Justin Fields. They traded Justin Fields for a reason. It's to draft Caleb Williams. Number two on the list, boy, did I tell you or what? Jerry Jones' definition of all-in is make Dak play out his walk year. Oh. That's number two. Oh, baby. And <laughs> his definition of all-in, I said when I came back from the combine, everything I heard was not at all what the definition of all in is for you definition mm -hmm. of all in is like i'm gonna go out i'm gonna get derrick henry i'm gonna resign dak we're gonna extend him so we can get some cap space we're gonna get a ton of people in here so we might not falter in january because we're going all in on this current roster with more reinforcements instead the all in is like we're going all in with just this roster and we're gonna make everybody play for their supper to stay with dallas from the coach to the quarterback and you're like wait a minute so that means you're gonna eat a 59 million dollar cap charge on your cap just this year that's what you're going to do the answer turned out to be what huh uh huh yes although they did convert some uh some money so they could save a little bit but not extend four them. million not extend them Oof. ian rapaport while we were talking to jeff garland saying the quarterback Dak Prescott and the Cowboys have a mutual understanding of his contract situation, sources say, with no offers from Dallas despite him being in a contract year. Owner Jerry Jones said, quote, we are where we are, locked and loaded for this year, end quote. No indication a deal is coming. Seems like rumor number two I heard at the Combine was spot on. I don't know how this is going to, I mean... I honestly don't know how this is going to make things better. I don't know. Other than the fact that you can't franchise tag him next year. That's part of his deal. You're going to have to re-sign him. If you're going to let him walk, he could sign anywhere else. And you just get a, a, a comp draft choice if that's the way it works. Depending on how many others you sign with no doubt more cap, more, more cap space if he walks. And then what, you're just going to start redoing the deal from scratch and he's going to give you a more Dallas-friendly deal? And I understand. Some folks out there be like, yeah, Dak has not proven it in January. He hasn't even played a single game in February no, they're yet. They're not making anybody so else prove that. Jerry's right? had enough of it, and he's going to make him do it. The it is go play into February if you want your money here. And then we'll put the bag on the desk for you. And I understand what folks are saying that. I just find this, how, how does that make him play better in January? Is that going to make him play better in January? It should. You think? Unless him playing for Dallas isn't, you know, he, he would love to stay. He loves to stay there. But if not, I mean, Tom Brady won elsewhere. Aaron Rodgers trying to win elsewhere. Peyton Manning won elsewhere. I mean, it's... It seems like Dak it's is just not enough effort, to be the, the fall guy for this win. You say play better in January. Dak hasn't played awful. It's 
that's the, the that's thing what is I'm we saying. always look at him like he's the fall guy. He didn't give up 27 points in the first you know quarter. And a half I understand against. that. I just wondered like how Jerry Jones's reaction to getting one and done this year, and how that plays out into the Dallas season this coming year, is is one of the stories this of 2024. And I understand you're like, every year is the Dallas Cowboys yeah. are the story of 2024 <laughs> or 2023 or, or fill in the blank. Or but it, it, it's, it's just, just mind-blowing to me that instead of just saying, all right, the roster needs to be retooled to take the pressure off of people when they are playing the most pressurized games. Instead, it's like, no, no, we're going to take the lid and we're going to put it on top of the boiling pot and we're going to turn the heat up and that's going to be the way we're going to get better results with a roster that I believe is championship quality. And that is really a pudding I need to see some proof on. There you go. All right, good people. There's the good news. Dak Prescott walks. At least you get a third round comp pick. Maybe they can turn that into another quarterback. Whew. Those who can do. Those who can't. Talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Are you just one that sits on the sideline to talk about other people? Or can you step up?